It's Pig and the Talking Poo. Pig and the Talking Poo was written by Barbara Catchpole and illustrated by Metafrog. Oh, that's an unusual name. Anyway, it was published by Ransom in 2012. It is about 12-year-old Peter Ian Green, or as everybody calls him, Pig. Pig lives with his mum, his older sister, his baby brother, and his grandmother. And at school, he hangs out with his best friend, Raj. One day, he discovers a toy poo, uh, which was given to him by his dad before he left their home. He decides to take the poo to school to play tricks on his teachers and classmates, but ends up losing it in the bins behind school. Will he get the precious poo back? Read Pig and the Talking Poo to find out. So, although this video is called Mr. O'Reed's Pig and the Talking Poo, Actually, I read the first three books in this series. Uh, the second one is called Pig and the Fancy Pants, and the third one is Pig and the Long Fart. I quite liked these books. Actually, I liked them a lot. I thought they were pretty nice. Just a couple of things I'm confused about with them. But first, what's good about them? The illustrations are great. This. Uh, Meta Frog did a really nice job. Um, they're very clear, very cool looking, pretty funny, you know, kind of realistic, but a bit cartoony at the same time. I think Pig is an interesting character, especially because you can really get inside his head. Everything is written from his perspective, and unlike, for example, Wimpy Kid, where a lot of what he is thinking is just there for jokes, uh, for Pig you get everything that he thinks. So you really feel like you get to know this character and you feel, especially after the second or third book, that you know what he would do in a certain situation. And I think that's really good. The stories themselves are pretty funny, they feel like things that I would have done when I was at school and to be honest things that I probably did do when I was at school uh, maybe one day I'll have to release Mr O's top 10 ridiculous embarrassing things that he did at school or maybe not so the things that I'm confused about first of all these books are really really short uh, the first one this one is just 51 pages long and most of the pages are taken up by the illustrations so they are really really short books. In fact because the books are so short and because the stories feel like episodes you know each time it's one thing that kind of happens one story that takes place a complete story. I actually think that maybe these books were written as one big pig book and then maybe later the publisher decided to break them into many smaller books and in fact each book is really just one chapter. Now I don't know but that's how it feels. Uh, but what that means is that you could take out from the library you know all six books and be finished with them within maybe an hour. That's how short they are. The other thing that's a little bit strange is he mentions a lot of TV shows which I think are now a little bit old-fashioned. For example, uh, the TV show called 24, which I don't really think is suitable for children your age, but uh, in any case, that was out a really long time ago. I don't even know if anybody watching this video was alive when 24 first came out. That's how old it is. The other thing that's stranger than that is Pig mentions 
the 24 TV show. And the main character is called Jack Bauer. He says on page 15, I just love Jack Bauer in 24. So this book is about 24 hours in my life. P.S. in brackets, if you don't know who Jack Bauer is, look it up on the internet or something. Da, 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 da. I talk about Jack Bauer a lot. That's how awesome he is. Now, in fact, he doesn't talk about Jack Bauer a lot. He doesn't mention Jack Bauer until, by my calculation, page 47, when he says, nobody crosses Jack Bauer. I bet his mum couldn't have made him stay in his bedroom without a telly. And considering that the book ends on page 51, I wouldn't exactly call that always. I would call that twice, once at the start and once at the end of the book. So that's kind of strange. The last thing, which again, I think is kind of strange, is that for books that are supposedly about poo and pants and farts, there's not a really a lot of poo, pants and farts in them. In fact, actually, these are books about a boy who is struggling at school. He's not very well behaved. I think he's having some difficulty with the fact that his dad does not live at home anymore. Um, it's certainly not, it's not a lot about poo, really. And when you pick up a book like this, you're getting ready for a lot of poo stories, a lot of poo jokes. But in fact, it's not really about that at all. So I was kind of disappointed by that. If they had just been called pig and, or pig and 24 hours in the life of a pig or 20, pig and his pig and the totally terrible day or the diary of pig or something like this. I think I would have been more ready for what these books were about and I think I would have liked them more. I liked them a lot, definitely. But the fact that, you know, I was sold on the poo and there's not much poo in it. I was a little bit disappointed with that. All that said, they're still good books. If any of this sounds like it might be interesting to you, then give them a read, borrow them from the library. I'm going to read uh, an extract now. This is your chance to have a think about whether this book seems a little difficult for you or too easy or just right. Have a think about how many words you know as I read aloud and any words that you don't know, think about whether these would be a problem for you for understanding the story or whether you could just read it anyway. Here we go. As I ate my chips, I got to thinking, how much would she cry if she found a poo in her food? She'd be worth seeing, I thought. I shouted, look over there. And she did. She looked over there. I put the poo between her chips and her peas. When she saw it, she went very still. Then she went a green colour. Then she started to make a little sobbing noise. Then she really got going and screamed. Her face went red, then purple. Spit flew out of her mouth. It was awesome. Teachers came running from all over the hall. She carried on forever until one of the dinner ladies said she was historical and threw a glass of water over her. Keely shut up then, just sat there dripping. I finished my last chip and went to get the poo back, but the plate was gone. The poo had disappeared. 1300 hours. At first I thought it was lost forever. I didn't cry, of course, but I was pretty choked. My dad had bought me that poo. Raj is much cleverer than I am, though. I don't mind. It's just a fact. He said, don't sweat it, pig. It'll be in the big bins. The big bins are at the back of the kitchens. They are huge. They are so big that there is a little ladder on the outside for the dinner ladies to climb up and put the mucky food that is left into them from the small kitchen bins. Every Friday afternoon, special giant dustmen come and fix the big bins onto the big council lorry that grinds everything up in a big round knife thing and takes it to the dump. I had to rescue the poo.
This book is pretty easy to read and quite short as well. There are six books in the series, although really it's more like six parts of one normal sized book. I would recommend it to anyone who likes the wimpy kid books or stories about going to secondary school and becoming a teenager. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone who expects that it's mostly about poo, pants or farting. Uh, anyway, Mr. O approves of pig and the talking poo.